The good is always triumphant in the end, and the bad is always looked down upon and scorned. Things like firm loyalty and the will to fight for what you believe in is always glorified and passed down through the ages as a tool for many others to learn from and copy. While things like treachery and evil intentions are despised and spit upon with no mercy. Be very careful the paths you take in life because the good is always triumphant over the bad in the end. In the 1100s, the Song Dynasty in China was going through a very bad period. They had lost an enormous amount of northern land to the Jurchens, who formed the Jin Dynasty. The Song Emperor had to struggle with keeping the Jin at bay and away from his southern territory. And for this reason, he needed as many warriors as he could get to defend his territory. One young man by the name of Yue Fei, who was very loyal to his emperor, was stricken with a serious problem because even though he wanted to fight for his country, his father had died and his elderly mother needed to be taken care of. So on one hand, it would serve his country, and on the other hand, it would stay home and take care of his mother. But the mother knew of her son's grief, and one day she told him to take off his shirt and kneel down. She then tattooed four Chinese characters on his back that read, serve the country with the utmost loyalty. Now knowing that his mother's wish was for him to serve his country, he promptly left to defend his emperor. Yue Fei quickly proved himself in battle, and as a result, he quickly grew within the ranks and soon became a high-class general. Yue Fei was a very loyal man to his country, but he also dreamed of getting rid of the Jin and taking back the land they had stolen. And this is exactly what he did. He engaged in one battle after another, fighting mercilessly and never once was defeated. In one battle in particular, the enemy would attack using ships. UFA simply took over the ships, stole them, and used them against the enemy. In another battle, with only 500 men, he defeated over 100,000. And it was not only loyalty and skills of battle he possessed, his morals and ethics were something just as amazing. If his soldiers were ill, he would personally administer medicine to them. If they died in battle, he would care for their families. And when he received rewards, he would share them with his men. But UFA's kind nature did not only just stretch towards his men. He forbid his soldiers to destroy or pillage any cities they would pass through. And on another occasion, a revolt broke out. And UFA was given the order to kill everyone involved. But UFA pleaded with the emperor to spare the people and only execute those who started the revolt. These acts and many others touched the emperor. And soon, he was awarded a banner of honor for his outstanding loyalty to the throne. But a man by the name of Chen Wei, who was captured by the Jurchens and then let go, and later under suspicious reasons came under the employ of the emperor as chief of council, wanted the emperor to simply cater to the Jurchens and give them what they wanted. Chen Wei was not happy with UFA's achievements. His army had grown from a simple 50,000 to 100,000. The chief of council felt that UFA needed to be stopped in order for his plan to go through. Chen Wei, being influenced by his wife and other people of the council, pushed and pushed the emperor until finally UFA and many others were called back to the capital and told to stand down. This of course upset UFA who knew that victory and his dream of taking the stolen lands of China were close and by turning back and leaving the Jin alone would push that dream further away. Once UFA arrived back home, he protested to the Emperor that if the Jurchens are left alone and given what they want, they would still just come back and attack later. But his words fell on deaf ears. UFA was then stripped of his position and given some low-ranking job. But lo and behold, it didn't take long for what exactly UFA had said to come true, and he and his men were all sent out to push back advancing Jurchens. UFA, who figured the Emperor now understood why they could not back off, continued his campaign in the North, determined to fulfill his dream of taking back the land that was stolen by the Jurchens. But what UFA didn't expect was that while he was out on his campaign, Chen Wei, his wife, and other councilmen were plotting to stop UFA 
once and for all. Time after time, Chen Wei spoke poisons into the emperor's ears, telling him that he should make a treaty that would give the Jurchens whatever they wanted from the emperor, and in return, would stay in the north and leave the Song Dynasty alone. The emperor, who certainly didn't learn his lesson the first time, agreed. The emperor then sent UFA a gold medal, which was his word, and his word was, turn back to the capital and stand down. But UFA didn't agree. He was not going to turn back now when he had the upper hand. He would finally crush these barbarians once and for all and be done with them. So he ignored it. The emperor sent out another medal and another. Yuefe remained defiant until the emperor had sent a total of 12 medals. He finally returned, which is exactly what Chen Wei wanted. Once he got back, Chen Wei, with the backing of the emperor, had Yuefe stripped of his position and imprisoned on trumped up charges. And while imprisoned, he was tortured constantly, but never broke or confessed to anything. At one point, when he faced all the people who accused him of selling out the Song Dynasty, he stood up, turned around, and took off his upper garment to show the four Chinese letters tattooed on his back by his mother. Serve the country with the utmost loyalty. But these obvious displays of loyalty were overlooked. And on Chen Wei's orders, with the backing of the emperor, a man that UFA so loyally served, had UFA killed. And after that, Chen Wei had the peace treaty made with the Jins, and then burned documents and everything else that could make UFA look like a criminal. But all Chen Wei's efforts were for nothing. Eleven years after the treaty was made with the Jurchens, they attacked, breaking the treaty. The Emperor then realized he had betrayed UFA, a man who did his best to restore the Song Dynasty and serve his Emperor. He soon pardoned UFA and everyone else involved and gave them all back their positions and wealth. The Emperor stepped down a year later and his stepson replaced him as the Emperor. This new Emperor did his best to make amends for stepfather betraying UFA. Monuments, books, statues, and even a tomb made. And to this day, UFA is now a Chinese legend. TV shows, movies, songs, and even video games are made in honor of this brave and loyal warrior. Things ended a bit different for Chen Wei, his wife, and councilman. After the emperor stepped down and his stepson took over, he did everything in his power to vilify the acts of Chen Wei. So much so that he made a monument for UFA that has UFA's statue in the middle and in front are statues of all the people that betrayed him kneeling down in allegiance. But there's a jail cell like statue to the side and in this jail cell are two kneeling statues of Chen Wei and his wife who are forever damned to kneel for all eternity in front of a man they so desperately wanted to destroy. And to this day, it is common for people and visitors of China to spit on these statues in disgust of the treacherous things Chen Wei did. This is Creep TV. Ain't no gentleman here, only creeps with no fear. Signing out.